Okay, today we have a theorem. Prove that f function from a to b is a function which is one to one and onto. Then f has an inverse function, that is there exists a function g from b to a such that g composed with f of x is equal to x for all x in a and f composed with g of y is equal to y for all y within b, okay? So let's first just visualize what's going on here. So I have a set A and a set B. I have a map F which sends points of A into points of B, okay? And then the one-to-one -one condition tells me that if I have two distinct points in A, they get mapped to distinct points of B. So I can never have two points in A getting mapped to the same point in B, okay? And then the onto condition tells me that everything in B gets hit by something in, in, in A, okay? So if I have an arbitrary point, if I pick an arbitrary point in B, then I know that it has to come from somewhere in A. Um, it has to be the image of some, some point A um, under the function F, okay? All right, so that was nice and all. We drew some pictures, but now let's get down to the brass tacks of the proof, okay? So we're gonna to need to unpack these definitions a bit more carefully. Okay, so F is one to one. This means that for all um, sorry, this just means that this means that a not equal to a prime um, implies f of a not equal to f of a prime for all a and a prime in the set a. Okay, so distinct points get mapped to distinct points, okay? All right, and then F is onto means that um, for all B in B, there exists an A within A such that F of A is equal to B. So for every point in the codomain, I can find a point in the domain whose image is B. Okay. All right, so we first need to define the inverse function and then show that it satisfies these properties. Okay, so let's define the inverse function. Okay, so we need a function from B to A, okay? Where I'm going to map small element little b gets mapped to the point to the point um, A um, is defined to be the, the value A um, such that f of a equals b, okay? All right, so we know that this assignment makes sense because f is onto. So for every point b, I can find a point a such that f of a is equal to b, okay? So this definition makes sense, okay? Um, if we wanted to be more rigorous about this, um, Do I want to be more rigorous or not? Let me go through this proof and then I'll show you a, a bit more rigorous way to attack this, okay? So, so continuing from this standpoint here, we now need to show that G is well-defined. So the problem stems from the fact that this might not be a well-defined function because we might have multiple points A that have the same image B. And so we need to use the fact that f is one-to-one -to, -one to make sure that this assignment is well-defined, okay? So we'll note that this is well-defined. Okay. 
since if a is not equal to a prime, we must have that f of a is not equal to f of a prime, and this is the one-to-one -one condition, so this is because f is one-to-one, -one. and so this tells me that, um, so b um, is not, or is mapped to a single point a. Okay, so if, if, um, if a, if, if, so let me just clarify this. So since um, if g of b equals a and g of b equals a prime, then we must have that, um, that f of a is equal to f of a prime, which is equal to b by our definition of the function g. And so we know that, um, that these two points have the same image, and therefore since f is one to one, we must have that a is equal to a prime, okay? So what this tells me is that g cannot map a single point b into two distinct points a and a prime, right? If a and a prime both satisfy this condition, then they must be equal, which tells me that there is a unique point a um, which satisfies this condition and is therefore, this assignment is therefore well-defined. Now, once we've proven that the assignment is well-defined, we just need to check that it is indeed an inverse. And so we just look at g of f of a, okay? Well, g of f of a is going to be the value a prime such that f of a prime is equal to this value b, which is f of a, which can only happen if a prime is equal to a, because f again is one to one. And so therefore, since f, so we conclude that in fact g of f of a must be equal to a, all right? And then, um, okay, so that proves one direction. Now let's look at the other, um, the other direction. So if I have f of g of b, okay? So this is going to be f of a, okay? Um, such uh, where this is equal to a, such that f of a is equal to b, okay? So this, this, this assignment, g of b, is the unique value of a such that f of a is equal to b. So in particular, this is f of a is equal to b here. So we see that f of g of b is equal to b, as um, intended by the problem. Now this was kind of a rough sketch. This is not actually the best uh, way to approach this. So let me just show you a bit more rigorous way to approach this, okay? So, Instead of defining G as a function immediately, I'm going to define G as a set theoretic mapping, okay? So I'm going to define G as first the set theoretic mapping. So I'm going to define F inverse from B to A as follows. So F inverse of a set now, um, E, is going to be the set of, um, of of a within a such that f of a is an e, okay? So this is the set theoretic definition of the inverse function. Basically, if I have a map f from the sets a to b, and then I look at a subset e of b, then f inverse of e is defined to be the set in A, it could be some crazy set, but it's defined to be the set of A such that every point in this set gets mapped into E, okay? So F of E is the maximal set of points in A such that the image of every point in this set belongs to the set E, all right? Okay, 
So, but this is a set theoretic definition. This is not a function uh, on, this is not a function from B to A. This is actually a function from the power set of B to the power set of A, right? Because it sends sets to sets. So it sends a subset of, it sends a subset of B to a subset of A, all right? Right, it sends this subset of B pulls it back under the pre-image of F to a subset of A, okay? All right, so to show that this can actually be, to show that this can be used to define a function, we need to look at the set theoretic map on a singleton set, okay? So if I look at F inverse of a singleton set B, then this is equal to the set of A within A by definition, such that f of a is in b, okay? Well, f of a being in this set just means that f of a is equal to b, okay? All right, so, so just note here that f of a belonging to the singleton set b is the same thing as just saying that f of a is equal to b, okay? All right, great. So at this stage, we have not actually used the fact that f is one to one. I wanna emphasize that this inverse mapping on the power sets can be defined for arbitrary functions. This is not, um, this is not, doesn't require one to one or onto whatsoever, okay? So to show that this can actually be extended to a function, I need to show two things that F inverse maps singleton sets to singleton sets. And um, yeah, so I, in particular, yeah, I just need to show that F inverse maps singleton sets to singleton sets, okay? So the first thing that I'll note is that the set of A with an A such that F of A is equal to B is always non-empty. Since which of these two conditions, f being one to one or f being onto, which of these two conditions tell me that this set is non-empty? What do you think? Okay, the answer is since f is onto. Okay, so since f is onto, um, I can always find at least one point a such that uh, the image of a is equal to b. This is the definition of being onto. Okay. And then two, I will note that the set A within A such that F of A is equal to B, this set is always a singleton. Now, this, the reason why this is always a singleton is since F is onto, I mean since F, since F is one to one, excuse me. Since F is one to one. Okay, and so, yeah, it's a singleton because f is always to one to one, i.e. if a and a prime are in this set, so if I have two elements of this set, then I can conclude that, well, these, these elements both have to satisfy the condition for belonging in, in the set, so they both satisfy f of a prime is equal to f of a is equal to b. Both of both a and a prime must have the image b, but since f is one to one, this tells me that a prime must equal a, since f is one to one. Okay, so then any two elements belonging to the set must be equal, so this set must just be a singleton, okay? So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that F inverse on singleton sets is always a singleton set. And so I can use this, this, this descends to a function. A true and honest function, which sends F inverse of B to F. Okay, so a function is just a, a map which takes, um, 
inputs to outputs, and it, it's a single valued function, right? The point is that this, this, this set theoretic mapping defines an assignment which maps an input to a single, single output. So since this maps a singleton input to a singleton output, it is indeed a function, and it's well defined for all b, because this set is always non-empty. So this is defined for all b um, in our set b, and so it descends to a function f inverse from b to a, um, which satisfies this property. And then once you understand this property, it's the same proof as what I showed before, showing that, for example, f of f inverse of b is equal to b, and um, f inverse and f inverse of f of a is equal to a. This is the same argument as what I showed previously. I can quickly recite it. So the reason why this equality holds is that um, is that f of f inverse of b. Okay, so what's f inverse of b? This f inverse of b is a um, such that it's it's this set. So it's a which such that f of a is equal to b. Um, a such that f of a is equal to b. So this becomes f of a here. And we didn't know this originally. So so if I just look at f of f inverse of b, this is f of a, where a satisfies the condition that f of a is equal to b. So I get f of a, this expression becomes f of a. a must satisfy this condition, therefore this must be equal to b. So therefore, f of f inverse of b is b, okay? Just by the way that everything's set up, like this almost falls out of the definition of these, um, the definition of this um, inverse mapping. This just falls right out, of the, right out of the definition, namely this condition right here immediately gives us that we must have f of f inverse of b is equal to b. And then similarly, let's just quickly um, recite that f inverse of f of a, this is going to be equal to um, a prime such that um, such that we can say a prime such that f of a prime is equal to f of a, in this case, my b is f of a, so f of a, and then again, by the one-to-one -one property, certainly a satisfies this, so this is just equal to a, okay, since f is one-to-one. -one. All right, that concludes this.